Great. Well, very excited to start the first session of this conference. So, um, like Mel said at the in the introduction, we have several themes running through, and we'll first start with our different ways of coping with COVID during these times. And uh, Tim is going to give us some um, overview from his research into how music has helped some people to cope with COVID. So um, just very brief uh, housekeeping kind of information. Obviously, because this is an online conference, there's no emergency exits or anything that I need to point to, but um, we do need to be mindful of the time. So Tim, I'm going to well, Tim, I, know this is, um, I will be sending you a reminder that it's going to give us when you um, do. Um, overview from his research into how music. I, okay. And then, um, uh, yeah, I, I will give you a warning when your time is up as well. Okay, thank you very much for joining us, Tim. So over to you. Okay, so everybody can hear me right now and can see my slides. That is perfect. Yeah. Thank you very much, Mele, for your very um, inspiring uh, introduction to this conference. Thank you, Baha. Thanks, everybody, for making this work. Um, and I want to walk you through two studies uh, that um, I have conducted together with uh, Barbara Leudel, Christina Salwit, and Bernhard Leipold. We are all part of the University in Universität der Bundeswehr München in the lab of uh, developmental and health psychology in, with the head Bernhard Leipold. Um, we conducted two studies. Uh, these are both uh, cross-sectional studies, so uh, I want to give you an overview, um, not so much in how music uh, does help, because, yeah, uh, but um, in how music may be used and what might be the role of music in this coping um, process uh, with the, um, the COVID-19 pandemic. Um, just as Charlie already said this morning, the COVID-19 pandemic um, can be regarded as a critical life event. It is basically a critical life event. Charlie called it a critical world event, probably uh, much uh, more adequate. And this requires adaptation. Uh, so we want to, I want to present today um, how this uh, stress which uh, is followed by the COVID-19 pandemic might be related to mute regulation through music and general coping. So I want to look at uh, several dimensions of stress that follow this pandemic. This is restrictions in everyday life and social relationships because of the lockdown. Everybody is at home. We cannot see our friends uh, probably and our family. Um, there is also uh, potential stress because we are afraid of getting infected. Uh, we have no real, uh, uh, at the beginning of, we had no real um, answer on what this might mean if we are infected. And uh, of course, because of all the lockdown, there are also uh, financial restrictions and job restrictions that are really troubling and might potentially be stressful. Now we can, um, we can um, meet all these uh, stressful uh, restrictions with general coping and emotion regulation processes like problem focused coping so becoming active and trying to change some something active or we might seek social support uh, in the family in the friends or we might uh, try to find a meaning so and this is um, behind this we subsume uh, like reappraising and uh, finding new uh, alternative interpretations uh, and in this change changed situation and uh, then we have the um, the um, dimension the process of rumination rumination i i think is a bit uh, twofold it's um, often seen uh, probably rightly so as a um, as a um, symptom of depression, uh, depression, but rumination in a limited time might also be um, in, important to to um, to get in touch with also negative feelings, and this might potentially be 
uh, helpful to cope with these. Um, and um, well, now the question is, uh, where comes the music in? We can, as we can see here, music listening is a means for regulating emotions. Um, simply the amount of uh, music listening, average music listening is related to emotion regulation as uh, studies have shown. And um, uh, Zuvisa Arikalju from uh, Finland, she has found several dimensions of and strategies for emotion regulation via music listening. So we uh, want to, music can lift us up if we are doing boring stuff, it can revive us if we are tired. It can give us really intense feelings. We can feel intense uh, sensations, strong sensations. It can simply uh, divert us from negative thoughts and feelings. Or we might discharge negative uh, emotions. We can let our anger out if probably by listening uh, to uh, heavy metal music, but I don't want to talk about uh, genres. Any genre can do, I guess. And uh, we can have music to walk, to work mentally through and think through our problems and what is depressed, what is what is causing our negative emotions. And we can find solace. And um, music can be like a friend, and it might we can feel understood by music in a way. And um, uh, Bernard Leipold and me, we also found uh, music to be related to general coping processes like meaning focused coping, accommodation, so flexibly adjusting to changed uh, situations so on a trade level and also to rumination. So uh, what we can see is that music can, um, can affect uh, cognitive processes like this accommodation, but also emotional if you want to uh, have this distinction. Um, but um, so as we can see, music can obviously uh, co um, um, communicate positive emotions, uh, but it can and uh, it can arouse us, can be energizing or, or, um, or it can be rather um, quiet. And uh, so I want to look at these as well. And here we have mixed, uh, mixed results. We can see that uh, positive valence does uh, reduce stress, but we can also see in other studies that people also listen to sad music to enhance negative moods. So this is probably due to different regulatory strategies. And now I want to look at, uh, at these uh, four big topics. Um, so, we uh, propose that stress from COVID-19 is associated with mood regulation through music and with general coping processes. And we um, hypothesize that efforts of mood regulation through music are related to general coping. Uh, the dim like I said, problem-focused social co um, support, rumination, and this meaning-focused coping. And uh, then we have two rather exploratory questions. Uh, that is, does mood regulation through music relate to the amount of music listening? So does music listening change uh, following the pandemic? And are there difference in music listening with respect to the dimensions of stress that I mentioned earlier? Now, in the first study, I want to look at these first two hypotheses. And uh, so we conducted a cross-sectional study with 401 participants. They were 55, 54 years old, and we have a 50% 50, 50, uh, 50 female and 50% male. And we asked them uh, how they uh, regulate, how um, often and uh, they uh, regulate, they use music to regulate their uh, mood. And uh, we have six items asking uh, stress from COVID-19, all together, it's a global stress score from COVID-19. And we have four measures for the general coping um, processes. And the data was gathered uh, in June 2020. So it's all very fresh. Now, um, this is the overall results from our first study. 
and uh, we conducted partial co uh, correlations uh, to control for age and music education because both uh, relate to coping uh, and or music listening behavior. Um, now, as you can see, these are quite complex relationships. I want to entangle these with you and want to have first a look at the relationships we found for the stress following COVID-19. And we find relationships with all four coping processes. Stress uh, is related to all of these uh, coping processes, but with different directions. We can see a negative correlation with the accommodative coping. So this flexible readjustment might be rather a buffer for uh, the stress following the pandemic, while the other three uh, coping processes uh, correlate positively and may thus be a reaction on perceived stress. And this might also apply for the mood regulation because it is also uh, through music. So music listening might also be rather a reaction on uh, the perceived stress. And as we can see in the next step, mood regulation through music is uh, associated with all four uh, coping processes. So it might therefore be seen as one element of coping with stress and uh, regulating negative emotions. Uh, it is interesting, uh, I find that all these relationships are independent of music education. So music listening can be a rather easily available means uh, to regulate emotions and cope with stress. Also, which you cannot see on this slide here, uh, school education um, has no effect on the results. Okay. Um, in association with uh, this, we found moderating effects of mood regulation uh, in regard to two coping mechanisms, rumination and social support seeking. Um, as you can see, um, the more uh, the participants um, regulate their mood through music, the more uh, they ruminate even if stress is low. So this is maybe this mood regulation and rumination, they might both indicate a rather being in touch with your emotions. Perhaps this is really, um, if somebody has a better interpretation, I really welcome them or not better, but uh, addition. <laughs> Um, and uh, we can also see that uh, the more the participants uh, regulate uh, their mood through music, the higher is the correlation between the stress followed by the pandemic and uh, social support seeking. So perhaps, uh, this is really perhaps, emotion regulation, um, the music might take a similar place like social like friends this is might uh, be uh, in the in the direction of this finding solace in music but this is really something to think about i guess <laughs> um so our second study uh, looks at uh, the um, mood regulation the, the the music listening patterns in a more in detail I will walk you through this as well. And also we want to look at the stress following COVID-19 in more detail. Um, so with the dimensions um, um, separated, as you can see here, it's again a cross-sectional study with 170 participants. This, uh, these are a bit younger. I will come to the, uh, this uh, later. But again, we have 66% uh, females, 34% males, good as well. And uh, again, we asked uh, the mood regulation through music with the same uh, instrument. But now we um, have more and uh, a bit uh, separated um, items and dimensions from the stress following COVID. We asked how afraid uh, are the participants of getting infected, how stressful are the restrictions in everyday life, and how stressful is the, uh, the work-related and financial restrictions. 
And we also ask how music listening, the simple, the um, simply the amount of music listening changed after the uh, pandemic. So compared to before the crisis, I listen to music less or much more. This was the question. And um, we um, asked how the mood was in pa the past week and which music they listened to in the past week and both with uh, separate effective grids with and the valence was the x and the arousal was the y-axis and the values are all from one to nine so we have a mood um, indicator for the last week and we have a music listening emotionality of music listening indicator of the last week so to speak and um, okay for the first uh, result is that uh, simply the, the, the change of uh, listening to music is positively correlated to mood regulation through music. So the more uh, one uses mood music to regulate his or her emotions, his or her mood, the more, this, the more they listen to music um, uh, in comparison to before the crisis. So this might also already hint somewhat to a, um, to a um, that mood regulation um, increases uh, it's, um, cross sectional, uh, that this uh, is related uh, with each other. And for the valence and arousal, what we can see is that altogether, uh, it's the mean uh, altogether, the participants uh, report that they are listening to more positive music and slightly arousing music. So this is uh, to have an overview and here are the overall um, results. Um, first, we, met, we conducted the analysis with the stress in one measure and we can see uh, rather um, yeah, this picture. Uh, we can see that older people experience more stress following COVID. 19 pandemic this is probably because they are in, uh, in the risk population and they also use music less to regulate with negative emotions and um, the stress from covid 19 is related to negative mood so they the more stress they had from covid 19 the the more negative mood they experienced and on first glance, the emotionality of the music shows no relationship. Um, but now let's see how this uh, is for how this um, applies to the different dimensions, the specific dimensions. And here we can see a more complex pattern. And again, I will walk you through this complex pattern. Um, as we can see, first of all, the restrictions in everyday life and the job and financial restrictions are related to mood and music measures. The restrictions in everyday life are related with a rather negative mood and also with listening to music of negative valence. So in the, when you are uh, um, when you experience when you have a lot of stress in everyday life, uh, the people said that they were listening to negative music of negative valence, sad music, angry music, for example. And when the job and financial restrictions are stressful, they report of listening to relaxing music, so music with low arousal. This is, um, I guess, very interesting. But now, interesting. But now, I think this is really interesting result. Um, that's why I separated it a little. Um, concerning the fear of uh, being infected, so a really strong negative emotion following the pandemic. Uh, and here music appears to be heard to contrast the own negative emotional state and to sort of positively uplift, um, perhaps. So altogether, when the um, Altogether, when the fear is high, music regulation is also high. Uh, and, uh, the th uh, and the three dimensions of, co of COVID-related stress show different relationships with music uh, listening behavior. And we must say that older people 
listen to low arousing um, music. Education again has no real has no effect here. So let's uh, sort of try to put all this together. Um, coping via music listening is related to general coping processes in our uh, studies and music related coping can be one element of coping uh, with strains uh, following the COVID-19 pandemic. Um, the pandemic appears to require a multitude of coping strategies and music can be one element among these. Um, so people increase music listening during the pandemic um, when it is a means for regulating emotions. Um, when, when, and in general, we have different patterns regarding specific strains following the pandemic. So music is used both to contrast and to reflect a stress following the COVID-19 pandemic. Uh, it contrasted in the case of the fear and it reflected, so it was concurrent to the restrictions in everyday life. And the job and the financial restrictions, this might uh, be uh, uh, in a, felt as a negative arousing situation and uh, here, uh, arousing situation and here music might uh, help to, to um, relax, perhaps. Uh, both studies show less emotion regulation uh, via music listening among older people, it does not influence the relationship, but it is probably uh, uh, an important result, which I cannot say because the, the age samples in both studies uh, were different. But older people appear to use music less for emotion regulation and uh, they might rely more on other coping processes. But as I said, this is, uh, this is uh, not so, this cannot be uh, answered adequately with these two uh, samples here. And of course, we have limitations. Both is uh, cross-sectional data, so I cannot um, I cannot give you um, any causal um, interpretations. Um, and I don't maybe if I implied that I didn't mean it. And um, the uh, we have a measurement of the average valence and arousal of music in one week. So we asked participants to sort of. Uh, guessing a mean valence and a mean arousal of the music they listen to, which is uh, obviously not so easy if you listen to a lot of music, um, you have to you have to give a give a mean value. So more research is needed here, uh, which uh, measures more on a on a on a, in a situation basis. And uh, I would suggest experience sampling studies uh, here. And these are the references I used. And I thank you very much. And I hope we all and you all will stay healthy. And I'm looking forward for comments right now. I try to. Thank go. you very much, Tim, for this amazing talk. I have actually um, taken part in your study as well. And right. so it's really nice to see the results of something that you have participated in. Um, so there's been a couple of comments about different aspects of fear and worry. Um, I'll just say these to you. I don't know if it was necessarily a question, but perhaps some sort of distinction between worry, fear and risk. I don't know if that if you think that would be relevant and if you want to comment on it. But also one more direct question on the methods. Um, did you ask respondents what genre of music they frequently listen to? is a question. Mm -hmm. Yes, um, this is an interesting question and I did not and I, I did not because um, I think um, or previous uh, studies make me think that uh, the genre is, um, is, a, is, a, is a consequence of, the, of, of this, why you listen to music. And so I'd uh, say that um, and th this is why I asked uh, um, why they, they listen to, uh, how and what amount they listen to mood regulation. And um, I decided to um, ask about valence 
and arousal rather than the specific genre because it's difficult if you have um, a participant saying I listen to classical music you don't know what what does he mean does he mean Stockhausen does he mean Schoenberg or does she does uh, or, or is it Chopin and I think this is a or you name it uh, and I think this is a big difference and uh, makes it difficult to interpret uh, the data um, and so I I sort of tended to, uh, more to towards uh, asking about um, what, how do you think the music you listen to uh, is in an emotional way? Yeah. Deliberately trying to make to to not make them answer on how do, what emotion do you think this uh, this um, this music um, evokes? Mm -hmm. It's diff difficult. It's a it's a it's an ongoing discussion. Yeah, and how this is uh, is properly done. It's very interesting. Maybe just a related follow up from that. Um, do you think people's what what people do with the music, or the way of listening to the music, mm -hmm. would have an effect on um, how it helps them regulate emotions? So you know, we could passively listen to music on our own versus share it with some people or sing along or dance to it. Um, do, are there any reasons for us to assume that these might have a difference? Yes, um, definitely. I, um, I, um, we, with, with, together with Bernhard Leipold, I, uh, I have conducted several, um, uh, several um, research, um, where we asked um, if they listen to music more um, more in an emotional way or more in, an, in a cognitive and uh, analyzing way, mm -hmm. concentrating on the music. And this ha did have different patterns in uh, mm -hmm. relation in rela with uh, coping processes. So this emotional um, uh, way of listening to music was rather related to rumination, for example, mm -hmm. and this um, this analyzing um, and this analyzing uh, way of listening to music was more related with um, with flexible coping processes accommodation. Very interesting. Well, thank you very much. Uh, I will have to cut it here to move on to our next speaker, but um, there might be more comments coming on the live chat board or the um, YouTube comments. But yeah, thank you very much for your talk. And upload from yeah, me. Yeah, thanks for having me here. It was a pleasure to join and to still continue joining. <laughs>